United States Steel Hour, live from New York. Now, Cliff Robertson and Mona Freeman star in the incredible story of a man and woman involved in a fantastic experiment. I'm sorry, the receptionist has stepped away from her desk. You'll have to call back. Why, well, I should think in a few minutes. Very well. I'll make a note of it. Excuse me. Yes? Dr. Strauss, please. What's it about? Well, I'm not quite sure. He just asked me to be here before noon. My name is Jane Rawlins. I'm a teacher. Hello, Miss Rawlins. I'm Dr. Kinney and Dr. Strauss's assistant. How do you do? It's very nice to meet you. Charlie Gordon is one of your pupils. Oh, yes, one of my best. You come with me. I think Dr. Strauss will see you as soon as he's finished. Thank you. You'll be very much in the Is it a, a him or a her? It's a male. We call him Algernon. Algernon. He's about to be your rival, Charlie. You and Algernon will run a race against each other. Oh, well, I can beat him. I'm a lot bigger than he is. It's not that kind of a race, Charlie. Charlie! What does this look like? Well, it's a, a puzzle. That's right. It's a maze. We put Algernon in here at one end, and we put a piece of cheese at the other end. Algernon knows that he must find his way through this maze if he wants to get the cheese. If he don't? Then he doesn't. He doesn't get to eat? He gets to eat. This is a diagram. It's exactly like Algernon's maze. You'll take a pencil, and draw a line from this end of the diagram to the other end, without going through any of the walls, you understand. You'll start at the same time as Algernon, and we'll see who gets through first. If I don't? That's what we need to know, Charlie, whether you can or whether you can't. Dr. Strauss. Yes? Miss Rawlins is here. Oh, Miss mm. Rawlins? Is, uh, is Miss Rawlins going to be here while I run the race? Later, Charlie. Take over here, Dr. Kinney, and set up the maze. Familiarize Charlie with the diagram. Start the test. Shall I wait for you before I start timing? No. Thank you for coming, Miss Rawlins. When's your next class? Four o'clock. We'll get you back. You come highly recommended. I do. You do? I see you've spent three years in graduate work, working on your doctorate? Yes, I got my degree. Then what? Well, I worked with retarded children for a while. Yet you're now teaching a class of retarded adults. Yes, that's right. Then one summer I filled in here at your clinic. Afterwards, I asked to stay on and they let me. Why? Why did they let me? Why did you stay on? Because I discovered that summer that nothing in this world needs more help than a child's brain in an adult's body. Charlie Gordon has been your pupil for approximately a year and a half. Yes, one of my best. Don't you want to sit down? Thank you. Miss Rawlins, do you have any idea why we've been running this series of tests on Charlie all week? Well, I assumed it was some kind of an experiment. An operation. Quite a simple operation, fundamentally, though it's taken ten years to develop it. Up to now, all efforts to deal with the mentally retarded have been along psychological lines. This operation may be the first organic approach to the problem. It may now be possible to improve the capacity of the human brain by surgery. How much of an improvement? Well, the operation could increase a subject's mental capacity three or four times. That's as far as we got with our latest subject, a white mouse. That's remarkable. 
How long does the improvement last? Well, at the moment, it seems to be permanent. If it succeeds with a human brain... And if it doesn't? It will, Miss Rawlins. But so far, you've only tried this on laboratory animals. Yes. And yet you're so sure that with a human... Quite sure. There's no physical danger? None. Five years of exhaustive tests have proved that the possibility of physical damage is no greater than it would be for an appendectomy. I had an aunt who died of an appendectomy. Miss Rawlins. I'm sorry, Doctor. I know what you meant. It's just that Charlie has become very close to me. And to me. At present, Charlie is only one of five possible subjects. All have the same mental and physical qualifications. All have excellent motivation. Many men of their type become hostile or apathetic. They no longer care about improving themselves. Charlie and the other four do care. It would be very difficult to choose among them if it were not for one circumstance. Me. You, Miss Rawlins. If this operation succeeds, this will only be the beginning of the experiment. The subject's brain will be changed. It will be able to absorb things it could never absorb before. An intense process of learning will have to take place. The education that most people receive in their first 22 years. He'll need a teacher. One with a background in psychology and practical experience with retarded adults. And most important, one he trusts. You fit this description. Thank you. Of course, I don't want to put any pressure on you, Miss Rawlins. No, I've gathered that, Doctor. But from a professional and material point of view... Oh, that's not important. That's always important, Miss Rawlins. Your future career will be assured. Once your work with us is over, you'll have your pick of assignments all over the country. You'll be made a full-ranking member of this research group. You'll be assigned a private office and classroom, and you'll be paid considerably more than you're getting now. Really? Yes. Well, I must say, Doctor, for a scientist, you're quite a businessman. I have to be. I don't. May I see Charlie now, please? Of course. I guess I'm finished. Seven minutes, 43 seconds. And him? Four minutes, 20 seconds. Hello, Charlie. Oh, hello, Miss Rollins. Well, how are you doing? Well, I ain't doing so good. I couldn't answer any of the questions, and I put all the blocks in the wrong holes, and I, I lost the race. I ain't even as smart as that mouse. Do you know why that mouse is so smart? No, I don't. Well, he had an operation. A simple, safe operation. And after it was over, he was smart. Well, after the operation? Mm -hmm. That's why we've been giving you all these tests, Charlie. You see, we want to perform this operation on a man. We're trying to decide if it should be you. Well, uh, the same operation? The one that made Algernon smart. Oh, well, you... You should have told me. I could have tried harder. Maybe I would have won it. You haven't lost, Charlie. You, you mean I still got a chance? A very good chance. Oh, well. Well, what do I... Miss Rollins, what do I do? Do you want this operation very badly, Charlie? Well, I want to... I want to get smart. I mean, if it uh, can make me smart, and, you know, and maybe understand some of the words you say, and... If I can only get a, a little bit closer, you know? I hope they can use you.
Charlie, no, 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 stop it. Oh, I'm sorry, Joy. Charlie, put the broom down, will you? It's lunchtime. What are you trying to do? Make us all look like a bunch of loafers? Oh, no, I, uh, it ain't that. I just, uh, I forgot my lunch. I, uh, Miss Murphy makes it up for me, but sometimes I forget it, you know? Well, you're the absent-minded professor type, see? You, uh, thinking such deep thoughts all the time, naturally, you get a little careless about details. No, it ain't that, Joe. Here, here, have a ham sandwich. No, I, I can't eat Come your on, lunch. Come on, eat, no. eat, eat, eat. Come on. Well, I am a little hungry. Hey, uh, Charlie, um, what's this rumor that's going around that uh, you're going to be away from work for a couple of weeks? What is that? Well, I'm going to the hospital. The what? So, I'm going to the hospital. You don't look sick to me. No, I ain't sick, Joe. I mean, well, I, I can't talk about it. What do you mean you can't talk about it? I'm your best buddy, ain't I? Well, sure you are, Joe. So, what's the big mystery? Huh? Well, uh, I promised him, Joe. I... Who do you promise? Charlie, has this got anything to do with that cute little broad that's been picking you up in a car the last couple of nights? Huh? Well, yeah, in, in a way. Uh... I didn't think you went for broads, Charlie. Oh, sure I do, Joe. You give her a rough time? Oh, no, I... She's my friend, Joe. So she's your friend. So where do you take her? You go out in the country, some nice, quiet, romantic little spot, or what? Oh no, Joe, it, it, it ain't like that at all. So what's it like? Well, huh? I think I, I better go back to work. Oh, Charlie, now I'm disappointed in you. You're keeping secrets from me. That ain't very friendly of you. Oh, Joe, don't, don't, don't be mad at me. Huh? All right, here, you go get some exercise. Come on. Moron. <laughs> Good night. Good night. Oh, hey, you want some coffee? Thanks. How's it going? Oh, <laughs> I'm exhausted. Well, good night, doctor. <laughs> doctor. Four hard years to go, Jane. Oh, no, no, thank you. Uh, well, uh, the last test wasn't very hard, Miss Ron. Uh, any more tests? Oh, a whole lot. Well, Dr. Strauss says that I don't get the operation until I do the test, so we better do the... That's right. And then after the operation, Charlie, we're going to give you some more tests. Yeah. See how much you've improved. Okay. Well, we better do them. All right. Now... Charlie, I'm going to mention two things to you. Mm -hmm. And I want you to tell me how they're alike. Okay. For instance, an apple and a pear. Now, they're both alike because they're both fruit. Do you understand? Yeah, sure, sure. All right, here we go. Mm. Shoes, gloves. Oh, uh, um, uh, shoes and uh, gloves, uh, you uh, wear them. Mm -hmm. Airplane, automobile. Um, um... Airplane and automobile uh, 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 move, and you ride on them, in them. Elephant, mouse. Uh, um, elephant and a mouse uh, are both animals. Good. Morning, afternoon. Uh, morning and afternoon. Um, uh, um. Morning, afternoon, Charlie. All right. Now, I have some pictures here, and I want you to look very carefully at them, because something is missing in each of them. Now, Charlie, Charlie, in this picture, it's a picture of a dog, and it has three legs. Charlie, you're not looking yeah. at the picture. And one of the legs is missing. Now, I want you to tell me what's missing in the rest of the pictures, all right? All right. A suitcase. Oh, uh, uh, it's, uh, it hasn't got a handle. Mm -hmm. It's a face. Um, she's, uh, uh, there's uh, only one eye. Mm -hmm. Good. It's a rocking chair. 
um, uh, there's um, uh, no. Um, <laughs> yes. It's a car. All right, Charlie. Now you just stack those over there. And I get these puzzles. Oh, Charlie, have you talked to anybody about this operation? I mean, anybody whose advice you can take? Um, no, no. Well, yeah, you. Well, anybody besides me. Well, who else is there? I mean, I got, uh, I got no parents, and uh, you know that, so. Well, I had a mother once, but I, uh, I don't remember that. Oh. All right, now I have a puzzle here, Charlie. And there are five pieces here. Now, I want you to put them together in the right order, mm -hmm. and they make something. All right, you start. You don't remember your mother, hmm? Oh, I... Well... Yeah, uh, sometimes I do. I mean, if I think real hard, I can remember her sitting on the edge of the bed and putting her hand on my head and saying he's burning up, but... Um, then I ain't sure. Maybe that was the lady from the orphanage. I don't know. Good. You were brought up in an orphanage, huh? Yeah, you? that's right. <laughs> Well, how was it for you? Were you happy there? Oh, yeah, yeah, it was uh, fun. You remember it? Um, no, I don't, uh, I don't remember it. All right, Charlie, I have another puzzle. It's the same thing. A few more pieces. Now, you put that together. Do you think I'll ever be able to do all them puzzles, Miss Rollins? I think so. Maybe after the operation, huh? Well, Charlie, there's no guarantee. Now, you know Dr. Strauss said the operation might not work. Oh, well, it worked on Algernon. It'll work on me. Oh, I'm sure it will. All right, Charlie. Now, I I'm going to say some numbers, and I want you to say them after me. Now, listen very carefully. Nine, Nine, four, no, let me finish. Nine, four, six. Nine, four, six. Seven, two, five. Seven, two, five. Two, seven, nine. Two, seven, nine. Four, five. Five, It's nice to see you, Charlie. Dr. Strauss said you came through the operation very nicely. He's very encouraged. 
We miss you at the lab, Charlie. I think even Algernon misses you. Well, Charlie, I'm so glad you're all right. Miss Rollins? Yes, Charlie? I don't feel any smarter yet. Oh, Charlie. It's no use. I, I can't. I can't do it. What is it? Well, I don't know what's, what's happened to me. Did the operation make me worse? No, I nothing can't do of it. the kind, Charlie. Well, I can't do the puzzle. Charlie, sit down, please. Now, just sit well, down. Well, I can't do the puzzle. No, 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 no. You're all right. Now, sit down. Absolutely nothing has happened to you. Nothing. Now, well, come on. Come on. Catch your breath. That's good. Now, just wait just a moment. How did the lessons go tonight? About the same. All right, Charlie? Yeah. Should we try again? Yeah. Okay. okay. Begin. He beat me this time. You finished? Yeah. He's finished. What? Take a look. You, you mean I won? Yes. You mean I won? <laughs> hey! <laughs> Hey, I beat ya! Miss Rollins, what happens now? This is the United States Steel Hour. Now a message of importance from famous film star Dick Powell. On this day each year when we celebrate the birthday of the father of our country, most of us have in our minds an image of leadership and dedication that is the standard by which greatness is measured. By giving of himself far and beyond the call of duty, George Washington inspired others to prove in a practical way that good things happen when you help. 
That phrase, my friends, is the theme of the Red Cross this year. And while there's no direct connection between the Red Cross and George Washington, there is a tangible relationship insofar as helping others is concerned. Think what Red Cross help would have meant for the men at Valley Forge. 11,000 men suffered there. Today, every month, 100,000 servicemen and their families are assisted by the Red Cross in meeting family problems and emergencies. In a year, this means the Red Cross spends over $33.5 million in service to the armed forces, veterans, and their families. More than 40% of the blood used by hospitals and doctors in this country comes from Red Cross blood centers. Just last year, more than 108,000 disaster victims were given emergency mass care by the Red Cross. Now, I've mentioned only three Red Cross programs. There are, of course, many, many more, like nursing. Red Cross volunteer nurses stand ready to serve the community in time of emergency. They teach free classes and care of the sick and injured, and mother and baby care. Then there are free Red Cross classes in first aid and water safety. Through them, thousands of lives are saved every year, and there are fewer tragedies as people devote their energies to both work and recreation. Yes, the Red Cross is many things to many people. This is the 16th year United States Steel has given someone like me an opportunity to speak for Red Cross and their program. So during March, Red Cross Month, when the chapter in your community asks for your support, I hope you will be extremely generous. I'm sure you will be if you remember these six words. Good things happen when you help. Thank you. Now we return to Act Two of The Two Worlds of Charlie Gordon, live from New York. I am speaking, um, 47 and one half square inches. Huh? Well, that's good. Yeah. Now, for tomorrow, why don't you go into that next chapter about circles? Oh, I already done that. You did? Yeah. I finished the uh, questions at the end of the chapter, too. As a matter of fact, I finished that whole book. But when, Charlie? Oh, I've been sitting up late nights. Well, I must say I'm very pleased. Well, all right, I'll prepare a test on all this material, and, well, then I don't see why we can't go on to solid geometry. You didn't read that book, too, did you? No, I didn't read that book. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll tell you what I did read, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Robinson Crusoe. Yeah. Can we, uh, talk about that book sometime? I guess so. But you finished reading that three weeks ago. Yeah, I read it again the other night. You did? Yeah. In one night? Yeah. Why did you read it again, Charlie? Well, a couple of things in there I wanted to look at, you know. Oh, what things? Oh, a couple of things. Like, when I read it before, all I cared about was what happened to him, you know. I mean, how he hunted and fished and built his own house and was finally rescued, and then they took him out the... You remember it bothered me because uh, they didn't say what happened to him afterwards, remember? Yes, I do remember. Well, I got thinking about it the other night. And uh, Robinson Crusoe, it uh, isn't what a, what happens to a man as much. It's, it's what happens inside a man, you know, inside his brain. I mean, living all alone like that with nobody to talk to. I mean, to really talk to. Because you're not a real human being unless you got somebody to, to really talk to. No, I don't suppose you are. And I never had anything like that happen to me before. I mean, being inside the mind of somebody, living their life like that. Is that what books are meant to do? Yes, they are, Charlie. But not very many people let that happen to them. I'll tell you what. I'll give you two or three more books to start with. Books that I loved when I first started to read. Yeah, how'd you start, uh, Mr. Rollins? <laughs> I've been reading as long as I can remember. My father used to read Dickens to us out loud when I was young. Dickens, who's that? Well, he's a wonderful English novelist. I'll give you two or three of his books, too, if you like. Your father, was he a teacher, too? As a matter of fact, he was. He taught English in a little college in Minnesota. Yeah. Why'd you leave Minnesota? Well, my parents died. They left me a little money, so... I headed towards the big city, kind of like a character in one of these novels. Yeah. Kind of like an orphan. Kind of. Kind of like me. Well, I, I never thought of it quite that way. But... 
Uh, after you uh, left home, you go right to the university, did you? Mm -hmm. Yes, I did. Did you always want to do this kind of work? Yes, I think I did, Charlie. I always wanted to help people learn. Yeah, because you were so happy uh, while you was learning. Yes, I was. Now, suppose I ask you some questions. American history, all right? On what date was the Declaration of Independence signed? Uh, oh, uh, July 4th, 1776. Who wrote it? Thomas Jefferson. Who helped him revise it? Benjamin Franklin, John Adams. Who signed it? John Hancock, Josiah Bartlett, William Whipple, Matthew Thornton, William Whipple, Charlie uh, Connor. was looking for you. What do you got there? Huh? Oh, uh, just a, a blueprint the foreman wanted me to look at. Is that a fact? You're really coming up in the world these days, aren't you? Yeah. Hey, uh, I got that for you. What's this? Well, you remember the other day you was talking about uh, your machine rattling so much it was making you nervous? I figured maybe we could put that on the lower right-hand clamp and it might uh, stop it. What do you think? What makes you so sure? Well, I ain't so sure, but I, I think it'll work. Who out. told you? Oh, nobody told me. I'd done it the other night. You I... went to somebody and they told you what to say. No. Who was it? No, Joe, I... it isn't that complicated, really. You just take the weight of the machine and the weight of the table. It's Don't all... give me that. What, you figured it out? You couldn't figure out which way is up. No, it's... Oh, the way you've been acting this last month, that's some kind of a gag. No, it's not. That's ah, not funny. I didn't say ah, it. That's not funny at all. Who do you think you are? All of a sudden, you're a big shot. No, you're well, better I... than everybody else. Mm -hmm. Look, you're not fooling anybody. Get wise to yourself, will you? You're Charlie Gordon. You're dumb, dim-witted Charlie Gordon. You're good for a laugh, and that's all you're good for. You're a moron. And nobody has anything to do with a moron. Expecting you tonight. I'm sorry. What is it, Charlie? Is there anything wrong? No. Is there anything I can do? No. How do you know if you don't give me a chance? We missed you at class tonight. Oh, I'm. Uh, I'm sorry. I went down to the uh, the plant to see some of my friends. <laughs> friends. When they think about people, they'll laugh at a, a moron, but they never think of laughing at a blind man or a crippled man. I guess that's the uh, price of uh, intelligence, huh? You learn Can I about... sit down, Oh, Sean? sure, go ahead, sit down. Is that an automatic rule, uh, Jane? You gained intelligence equals lost friends? Hmm? Charlie, George Bernard Shaw wrote something once. Yeah. Whenever you learn something, it always seems at first as if you'd lost something. The whole world is opening up for you, Charlie, a world that didn't even exist a couple of months ago. Now, if you have to feel a little pain along the way, it's worth the price, isn't it? You do your job very well, Jay. My job? Charlie, this is my dream. It's a miracle. What you've been doing, it's so much more than just a scientific experiment. I I'm sorry about your friends at the factory. I know they meant a great deal to you. But do you realize what you found? Do you realize? You found books, music, ideas. And you learned to look inside yourself. I don't think you could turn back now.
even if you wanted to. No. Coffee? Yes, please, Black. I'm going to ask Dr. Strauss if I can work in the laboratory. Have you spoken to him yet? No. Do you think he'll let me? Yes, I guess so, but what about the factory? I'm not going back to the factory. I don't belong there anymore. Jane, you're right. I've been thinking about it these last few days. You're right, it's just like a miracle. It's as if God had reached down and handed me this gift while he handed it to me. Why? What does he want me to do with it? What's the purpose? You're the purpose, no. Charlie. You're it. That's not enough. It's got to be for everybody. It's got to be for every mentally ill mind. And I've got to help. Doing what? I don't know. I don't know. Helping with Dr. Strauss, maybe getting ideas, maybe even helping with the operation. Maybe that isn't the final approach. I don't know. I do know one thing. That I've lived in both worlds and I know what it's like. And I'm in a special position to help and I've got to. Ignorance is the worst thing that can happen to any man. There's nothing any worse. And I've got to help. Yes. Yes, of course you do. And I can't do it without you. Oh, Charlie. I'm so glad you think so. Is that right? Very. Yeah, let me do that. Edith, do you remember that afternoon a few weeks ago when Charlie was typing my lecture notes and he showed me a mistake in one of my equations? <laughs> the section on metabolism? Yes. You forgot to deduct a factor for the time differential. I remember, Edith. <laughs> he was right and I was wrong. What you don't know is that I was as jealous as a schoolboy. It's a very human reaction. Would have been even more human to face the truth gracefully with a generous heart. I gave Charlie Gordon a brain and he was using it better than I could use my own. Significant too that I should wait. I should wait until a time like this to think of it. Oh, I thought I saw a lie then. What are you doing here? Well, I came back to check those papers for the guinea pigs. And we uh, stayed late to check an experiment. We're just leaving. There's no hurry about those reports, Charlie. Why don't I drive you home? Experiment with encephalograph, what's wrong? Well, Edith has noticed certain things in the last few days. She felt she ought to consult me. No? What kind of things? Well, I ran him through the maze on Monday, and he took much longer than usual. Tuesday, he was still slower. Mm -hmm. Yesterday, he wouldn't go through at all. All his other reactions have slowed up, too. What's the matter? Is he sick? Oh, we've made every test. There's nothing wrong with him physically. Well, why doesn't he run the maze? He's a mouse, Charlie. That maze is beyond a mouse's intelligence. And the operation was a success? Yes, it was, for a while. Well, none of the other mouses regressed? Well, none of the others showed so much improvement. Well, that means that I, uh... No, it doesn't mean anything of the kind, Charlie. We can't be sure that Algernon's regression will continue. It might stop tomorrow. He might start improving again. What's happened to Algernon may be a purely individual condition. We certainly don't know that you'll follow the same pattern. But you don't know that I won't. This is the United States Steel Hour. And here's news from Jack Brand. Department stores near you are now oh, featuring honey. something new and something you want to see. I, I, I don't even know which which end of a coffee maker you put the water into. 
Well, why don't I just wait down in the sports department? Now, you promised to come shopping with me for once. Oh, well, I guess you can't win them all. <laughs> Look what they've got over here. A special shop just for stainless steel things. Oh, you want to be the hostess with a stainless reputation. That's not funny. <laughs> Isn't this stainless coffee maker beautiful? Oh, it doesn't do anything for me. Now, uh, if you'd like to start talking about a new set of golf clubs... You mean you don't like stainless steel? I didn't know anybody didn't. Oh, I, I didn't mean that... Uh, There's really nothing as lovely as the gleam of stainless steel on your dining table. May I be of any help? Well, I, I couldn't help speaking to this gentleman. He doesn't seem to appreciate how fine stainless steel is. I didn't mean to say... Why, that. sir, stainless steel is quality all the way through. There's nothing to chip or peel or wear off. I can vouch for that. I've used stainless in my cooking demonstrations for years. But this gentleman doesn't seem to realize how wonderfully durable it is. Gee, but I that's said. the beauty of stainless steel. You never have to worry about treating it rough. And that's not the only beauty. You never have to polish stainless steel. Well, I'm for anything that'll save me work. Talk about saving work. Stainless steelware is just about the easiest thing in the world to wash. It practically just swishes clean, doesn't it? Mm. That's because the surface is so hard and smooth. So you see, it really does pay to look for this mark on the things you buy. Oh, that's the mark that tells you a product is made of stainless steel. Beautiful. And the beauty of stainless steel is the beauty lasts. Oh, what's all the excitement? <laughs> Why, we were merely talking about the beauty of stainless steel. Never mind. I'll read about it in the newspaper. Bill? Bill? Gee, honey, I know that stainless is the greatest. Oh, um, we like this one. All right. I didn't mean to start anything. Like you know, that. I think we're buying a real conversation piece. <laughs> <laughs> See the bright new products with a gleam of stainless steel in the new stainless steel shops in stores near you. And now, live from our studio in New York, Act Three of The Two Worlds of Charlie Gordon. Hi, darling. And you didn't pick me up tonight. I thought I'd better bring dinner to you. Oh, I'm sorry. I, uh... Slip my mind. Uh, Jane, do you mind if I skip dinner tonight? I certainly do. I brought it. I'm going to cook it. Oh, we have a steak, some soup, a cup of tea. I'm working on this last section. I think I can finish it in a couple of hours. I know, and you'll work all night without food. No, thank you. I've got to get the report done. You've got to eat, too. Three weeks at this pace, that's ridiculous. I've been working on something I call the Algernon effect. It's a direct relationship between the rate of growth of brain cells and the regression. Huh? I only have enough time, I can explain why the effects of the operation are only temporary. Oh, darling, you've got plenty of time for that. Do I? Take a look. My new roommate, I bring him home nights now. A life of eating and sleeping. Happy, useless, brainless. It's not the same for you, Charlie. Dr. Strauss told Dr. you. Dr. Strauss is a very kind-hearted man. Algernon and I have been in the same boat up to now. Why should we suddenly part company? Because it's been three weeks since he's regressed. And absolutely nothing has happened to you. Hasn't it? Well, I haven't noticed any. Take a look. Well, this looks like doodling. Started out as a simple equation. I've done it many times. I've been staring at it for the last half hour and it won't come into my head. I'd like to get something in your stomach. How about a steak? My reading is slower. I can't concentrate. I can't work figures in my head anymore. Well, that's just it. You're tense. Darling, you've been working too hard. Don't treat me like a child. I'm sorry, Charlie. 
Look, if you say you know that equation, then you know it. Now you take another look at that stupid equation while I go get us some wine. I don't think I should drink. You shouldn't, but you're going to. Uh, red or white? It's red. All right, red. I I'll be right back, Charlie. Be right back. Dear God, please. Please, just let it pass. Just let it pass. I've asked Charlie to come in. I think he has a right. Edith, I've always thought of you as a scientist, not as a sentimental female. It's not sentiment. It's ordinary human interest. You call me, doctor? How's your report coming? Well, I'm almost finished. It's uh, been a little slow. Charlie, abstract reasoning can only bring a scientific investigation just so far. Then more facts must be discovered. You've reached such a point in your report. You can't say any more about the effect of an operation on a brain till you've examined such a brain. We've got to perform a dissection of Algernon. Kill him. It ought to be done immediately while the brain cells still retain some effect of the operation. At the moment, no other animal can give us the information we need. I'm not asking your permission, Charlie, but this has to be done. Doctor, you do have another animal that can give you the information you need. Charlie. Well, Algernon, it looks like man wins out over mouse, huh? I'll uh, send you that report in a couple of days, Doctor. I won't be around much anymore. Yeah, by all means, you deserve a vacation. I won't be around anymore, Doctor. Charlie. Well. I won't be much use around here, will I? Charlie, I'm so sorry. Don't be silly, Doctor. You've done everything you can. Well, let's get to work. We haven't much time, Oh, hello, Jane. How are you? How are you? Good, good. How are you? Well, it's... It's not so good for my pride, just sitting my phone all day. Huh? Oh, yeah. See, I'm sorry about that. Uh, hey, you want some eggs? No, thanks. Huh? Well, Charlie, what have you been doing? Well, you know, just sort of sitting around and thinking. You can't spend all of your time just sitting around thinking. No, that's right. Well, I went down to the factory yesterday. They're going to... Take me back. I get to work in the blueprints uh, for a while. Marry me, Charlie. Oh. oh, well, look, I ain't that good a cook. You ain't even tasted the eggs yet. <laughs> there we are. Hey, uh, oh, look at that. There's that Algernon effect. You know, Dr. Um, uh, Strauss. Charlie, me... I deserve an answer. Yeah. Dr. Strauss sent me that thing the other day, and I couldn't make head and a tail out of it. I mean, it's just a lot of figures to me. Well, I never had a head for figures, but boy, that... Please marry me, Charlie. You want some coffee? Jane. Robinson Crusoe. It's the best book I ever read. Goodbye, Charlie. Goodbye. Miss Rollins. Charlie. Hey. I heard you were back in this department. 
Yes. Uh, there's this rumor going around there. They're saying you had an operation. You had um, something done to your brain, only it didn't last. There's nothing to that rumor, is it? Well, I, I don't know. I... Yeah, well, I didn't think there was anything to it. Uh... It doesn't matter anyway. I'm glad to see you back, Charlie. Hi, oh, yeah, Joe. Yeah, sure. You're my best buddy. Charlie? Let's see. I'll come back in a couple of days and bring you some more. Hello, Charlie. Oh, hello, Mr. Rollins. It's been a long time. It's nice to see you. Oh, well, it's nice to see you, too. I was in the hallway when I heard you come in. Well, I, uh, I come over here sometime before work, you know? Yes. Yes, I know. Well, I was in our classroom when I heard you come in. Do you remember where I used to give you your lessons, Charlie? How much do you remember, Charlie? Well, I, uh, I remember uh, you talking to me, and, uh, oh, I, I remember a lot. Come back to class. Let me help you. Help me. Why, oh, Will, I promise you. You'll be reading books again. You might even read Robinson Crusoe again. Robinson Crusoe? That's a story of a man who was all alone on a desert island with no way to protect himself. At first, he gave up all hope. And then he started to work. And he worked very, very hard. And then one day, he found a friend to help him. Did he find a, a footprint in the sand? Yes. Yeah, I read a book about that one time. Yes, you did. And you can read it again. You can read all about him. Oh, that's, that's hard. Yes, I know it's hard, Charlie. But you can do it. If you want to. But you had before, Charlie, that, that eagerness, that, that wanting to learn. That was something special. Charlie, find that again. You can do so much with your life. Well, you think about it. And Charlie, remember, I'm always in that classroom. 
if you need me. March 8th, the United States Steel Hour will bring you a lively music and comedy spoof starring Ernie Kovacs and Edie Adams in Private Eye, Private Eye, starring Hans Conrad and Pat Carroll. March 8th, the United States Steel Hour. Don't just shop for a fry pan. Don't just shop for a coffee maker. Don't just shop for a chafing dish. Shop for a fry pan, a coffee maker, or a chafing dish with the lovely gleam of stainless steel. To make this easier than ever for you, stores everywhere are setting up special stainless steel shops like this one, featuring exclusively products of stainless quality. And the beauty of stainless steel is, the beauty lasts. The beauty lasts because stainless won't tarnish or discolor. Never needs polishing. The beauty lasts because stainless won't chip or peel or wear off. The beauty lasts because hard knocks or no, stainless steel never shows its age. Be the hostess with the stainless reputation. Look for this mark on the products you buy. Now here's a message from our alternate program. On March 1st, the Armstrong Circle Theater will bring you the fascinating story of gypsies, swamis, and others who claim to predict the future through strange, mysterious, and often fraudulent methods. Be sure to see The Fortune Tellers one week from tonight on the Armstrong Circle Theater. And now tonight's cast. Cliff Robertson as Charlie Gordon. Mona Freeman as Jane Rollins. Maxwell Shaw as Dr. Strauss. Joanna Roos as Dr. Edith Kinnian. Gerald O'Loughlin as Joel. And Ira Barmack as the medical student. The kidnapping of the prettiest girl in the West forces the gunslinger to take a dangerous risk tomorrow night on the CBS television network.